Hey everybody, we are Bean and Bagel. We are a married couple from the Midwest in the US. I'm from Michigan, she's from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Together we normally talk about food on our channel. We post videos one to two times a week if you're interested in following the channel. We're glad to have you. Today we are talking about Fago Pop. And anybody that's familiar with Detroit, Michigan probably thinks about the automobile and they don't think about Fago Pop, but Fago Pop is actually a staple of Detroit that many people don't know. So we're gonna share some information about the company and Hope is gonna be our critic for Fago Pop because I grew up with Fago and I already know that I like it. On our channel, we do try it or walk by it as our review. I'm just gonna say try it. And she's going to be more of the critic because she's from another state and she doesn't have it as much. She didn't grow up with it. So she's more fair when it comes to you should try this or you should walk by this. Because I don't know if, you know, my grandma or my mom put Fago in my sippy cup or in my <laughs> baby bottle when I was young. And maybe I just grew up with it and I love it and I like it. So we're going to let her be the fair critic. If you're unfamiliar with Fago though, it has about 50 plus flavors and like Verner's ginger ale, everybody in Michigan is familiar with it. It's technically nationally, you know, marketed and available, but in my experience, I only pretty much find it in Michigan and I've been to a lot of states. So let's just get into the video and we will share some more information about it, starting with Hope. So the flavors that we're gonna be having today are the Red Pop and the Rock and Rye. And like Greg said, Fago started out in Detroit, Michigan. It was in 1907. It was made by two Russian brothers and their last name was Faginson. And as they were, you know, starting to make their soda, they found out that their last name didn't really fit too well on the bottle, so they had to shorten it down to Fago. So that's how it got its name. And those two Russian brothers were also bakers. That's kind of how they started out. But uh, as they transitioned into making soda, they based their first three flavors um, on their cake frosting flavors, which were grape, fruit punch, and strawberry. And the strawberry is what we now know today as Red Pot. Nowadays, Fago is owned by the National Beverage Company. And the National Beverage Company also owns Shasta and also one of my faves, LaCroix Sparkling Water. Um, but Fago has, like Greg said, a lot of different flavors. Um, and they also make kind of their own uh, versions of brands like Sprite, Dr. Pepper, Mountain Dew all those kind of stuff as well as additional ones. Um, but I'm gonna start out with this Red Pop one. So while Hope tries the Red Pop, I'll give you a little bit more history about Fago. Fago was actually the first company that received credit for the twist off cap that's commonly used today. They also are known as the company that started the word pop that a lot of people use over soda because when they marketed their soda, they called it pop because of the sound that it made when it would be opened. So it makes sense that a lot of people in Michigan specifically and the Midwest and other parts of the US uh, would call it pop nowadays because as Hope said, Fago came out in 1907. So that's a lot of time for that word to kind of settle into the culture, so to speak. Um, so that's where the word pop essentially comes from. Another thing that's interesting about Fago is they were ahead of the curve when it comes to selling things online. They actually started selling their drinks on the internet in 1998, which as many people know today, that was not very common for the average household to have the internet in 1998. You know, that, those were the days where like it was AOL, Instant Messenger, 
maybe a chat room or something. I mean, I know you could do other things on the internet, but it wasn't very well known to go online and like buy things and have it shipped to you in that year, especially. So it's another interesting tidbit of information about Fago, the history of Detroit as more than just the automobile. So as far as my review on the Red Pop, Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to say walk by it. Shame. <laughs> because I think it kind of tastes like melted down licorice. That sounds awesome. And, <laughs> well, How that's you because not? you love licorice and I don't. That sounds awesome. But, you know, I can see how it's one of those flavors that if you had it a lot as a kid, it, it does kind of have that nostalgia kind of a flavor to it. So I can see why he would love it. But for me it just reminds me a little bit too much of melted licorice so I'm gonna have to say walk by it but one that you might not want to walk by is Fago's root beer because their root beer was actually rated one of the best in the USA by Bon Appetit magazine so might be one to consider but the next one that I get to have today is the Fago Rock and Rye and this is another of Greg's favorites, so he had to include it in this video. So Rock and Rye is named after the alcoholic drink of rye whiskey, rock candy, and bitters. And as Hope said, I've liked Rock and Rye ever since I was a kid, or it's been one of my favorites, I mean. And as a kid, we've all been there, we've all been immature, we've all listened to music we probably shouldn't have listened to, and one of the groups that I used to listen to is called the Insane Clown Posse. They are from Detroit and they have a tradition at their shows with Fago. They spray it on the crowd in their concerts just as a traditional thing that they do that's kind of funny. Uh, the kind of music that they do, I would consider it horrorcom. So if you think of movie genres, you would put horror and comedy together because they talk about violence in some kind of comedic ways. I don't recommend it though, because I'm an adult now. But another story as far as me being a kid and Fago, I liked Fago because it was affordable. And I think a lot of families liked it too because you didn't just have to have water in your house. It was very cheap and you could have something sweet in your house that was budget friendly and being a kid growing up and you know you have adults that don't always want to buy you stuff like candy and pop and stuff like that in Michigan we had a way around that we had the bottle deposit and the can deposit where you could take cans and bottles to the grocery store and you get money for them so kids would walk around collecting cans you know we were working from the time we were toddlers, basically, so we could get our candy and our pop, something that Minnesotans don't understand. We were working hard over there in Michigan as kids, trying to get our Fago because it was cheap. And you could do that after you collected so many cans. And funny story, by the way, when I first moved to Minnesota, I was at a friend's house and they had pop. I drank one and when I was done with it, I didn't know what to do with the can because in Michigan you would separate your garbage from your cans so that you would take the cans back to get money. We didn't care about the earth back then. It was more of like, let's keep the can so we can get our money back. <laughs> and like, I asked his parents, I was like, where do you guys keep your cans? Because I wanted to be respectful and separate it for them. <laughs> and they looked at me with like a dumbfounded look like, what are you talking about? Like, we throw our garbage in the garbage can. We don't separate our garbage like one is more special or something. <laughs> and I said, well, like, you don't keep your cans? And they're like, why would we keep our cans? <laughs> and I'm like, for the money. And they're like, yeah, we know what you're talking about, but we don't do that here. So you can just throw it in the garbage. That took me so much time to wrap my head around because I kept the cans because you got money for them. So I actually think that sounds kind of cool to be able to buy your own stuff as a kid. 
all of us over here in Minnesota had to be begging our parents and we were deprived of all that candy that we could have been, you know, earning money for. So, you know, as far as rock and rye though, I think that I would say it's a try it. I do like this one a lot better than the Red Pop. It doesn't taste like licorice. It tastes like kind of a cream soda flavor with like a fruity twist. So I actually do like that one. I find it a lot more enjoyable than the Red Pop. So I'll give that one a try it. But that is our video for today. Thanks for coming with us on this Fago adventure and we hope you're having a great day. Bye. See ya.